You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Derek Hill, the drummer for the band Paramnesia from Vancouver. Their new EP, Aspect of Creation, is coming out on June 18th, and I'm really excited for it. They've released a couple of singles already, and they sound really awesome. If you haven't listened to these guys yet, well, frankly, that means you haven't been listening to my show, and I take that very personally. Derek, thank you for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Yeah, thank you, Derek. Nice to nice to be here. <laughs> I, I think this is the first time I've interviewed someone with the same name as me. <laughs> well, it just means it's a special day, man. It's a special day. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, so, uh, how's everything in Vancouver for you right now? Are you all pumped to to let this EP hit people's ear ear holes soon? <laughs> oh yeah, we've been uh, we've been working on this EP for quite a while now. Um, kind of through the starting of working on this, we were going through a couple of member changes. Uh, so that definitely kind of set things back. And of course, COVID came and uh, we were supposed to release this album a while ago, but with COVID kind of interrupting a lot of our uh, recording and uh, mastering time, it just, uh, you know, didn't work out the way we'd hoped, but we're extremely happy now to present it to the world and and uh, get it out there after it t- took us you know longer than we expected but hey we're, we're here now and and that's all we can do is just keep going forward well i i kind of thought that this would have been one of those things that would really rock a band like you guys because you guys played live a lot it seemed like you guys all had a shared passion for performing on stage and going out and doing shows so that must have been a real change for all of you yeah, absolutely. We were definitely hitting the scene pretty hard, you know, playing in in Vancouver at least at least once or twice a month and then trying to book small kind of road trip tours uh, to the outside, you know, such as Vancouver Island and head out to Alberta and all these kinds of things. And um, especially uh, the summer that COVID hit, we had our first ever American kind of break in uh, tour planned. We had a West Coast Canadian and American tour uh, for about a month on the road. Uh, we were calling that, ironically, the uh, Survive the Virus tour. That was uh, <laughs> before this kind of got uh, to the severity it was. So we were trying to be a bit edgy, but you know, of, of course, it uh, did not survive the virus, and we got uh, we had our vas- visas paid for in full, and uh, no, none of that back, no refunds, no tour. So we just kind of had to step back to square one, and just like everyone else did, you know, it wasn't just us; it was the thousands and thousands of other artists and musicians who were unfortunately unable to uh, do what they love and, and pursue the tours that they were they were planned to do that summer. So a lot of bands nowadays aren't really touring bands, like bands that play shows. A lot of bands are just like, let's get together and, uh, you know, try to make an album. Or maybe let's not even get together. Let's be spread out across the entire globe and make an album. So from getting together in the beginning with Paramnesia, was it a shared idea? Like, we're going to be a band that plays live? Yeah, absolutely. At least uh, for... Andy and I, Andy is kind of the brainchild of this band. Uh, He's been writing a lot of these songs for a long time now. And um, we actually had met on Craigslist and we were jamming in my, uh, in my snowboard shop that I manage after hours to kind of start the band, just him and I. And that was, we were doing that for quite a long time. Um, And then as we acquired members, we kind of, you know, made it known that this is something we're passionate about. And if you were going to join our band, then this is what we wanted to do. We wanted to hit the road and, you know, go share our music with with whoever we could and share those experiences and have a good time. So how how did do you remember meeting Andy after just answering this Craigslist ad? What was your first impression of Andy? Uh, you know, I almost don't even remember, and that's kind of a good thing because we hit it off so well. Uh, I think we kind of you know greeted each other, had a little bit of small chit chat, and then we sat down and he started showing me the riffs. All he'd sent me the material beforehand. And I personally told him that I didn't think I could play this style of music because I was not a death metal style of drummer. I was always playing more kind of punk rock and hardcore styles uh, and, and, you know, a little bit heavier stuff, but never really anything in this technicality. So he was just like, well, man, I, you know, it sounds so far, it sounds great. And uh, we got along really well. 
uh, the chemistry was there. So we just decided to keep pushing for it and, uh, and see what members we could find who'd want to take this journey with us. And what kind of bands do you guys remember talking about? Like, was there any like early influences or something you looked at? Like if we could do something kind of like that, that'd be fun. I'd say definitely. Uh, Andy and I had kind of different uh, ways that we wanted to do things. I myself personally really wanted some like clean style vocals mixed in, you know, not all clean vocals, but uh, some some heavy screams with a mix of cleans, whereas Andy was not necessarily a fan of that. Uh, when we did meet our uh, former bassist, Zach, he had a very beautiful, almost operatic style voice that he could add in there. So we definitely started writing. Our, our first EP we released has some of that clean singing and cleaner style to it. Uh, but once um, we had to part ways due to touring, um, we kind of realized that, okay, we're not going to have this anymore. It's it's going to be quite hard to find a basis that can also do that. And that's kind of, you know, narrowing down our search a little bit too fine. So we just decided to keep going with uh, with what we had and, and putting that clean kind of vocals aside for now and then just kind of figuring it out as, as we go what what we wanted it to really sound like. But uh, I think we, we kind of nailed it with our new members and was able to give a lot of good input and direction. So just kept kind of going with that. And I need to give a shout out too. I mean, it's a, a kind of old news now. I'm kind of late to give congratulations, but I still want to say congratulations to Kale for winning Best Vocalist from the Whammy Music Awards. Uh, I think that was like 2019. Yeah, that was awesome. We were uh, absolutely elated that uh, that, that happened because, you know, death metal is a pretty specific genre and people aren't not everyone's drawn to death metal. So these categories too, we were, we were surprised to find out that it wasn't just best vocalist in a metal category. They were talking best vocalist kind of locally and uh, out of any genre. So we were definitely elated that, uh, that he was able to get recognition because Kale's been hitting the music scene very, very hard for a long time. He was in a few other bands and they did a lot of touring across the globe. So, so it was uh, definitely his time. <laughs> so congrats to you, Kale, if you're listening. Yeah. And uh, let's get back to this writing process, because uh, obviously it, it all sort of begins with Andy, right? This is kind of his baby. But then when it gets filtered through the rest of you guys, what is that like? Um, so for myself, uh, I typically just get a track from Andy with a click in the background and then another separate track with kind of the base of what he kind of wants the drums to sound like. And then he lets me just take free range of it. Uh, we are very lucky to have acquired, uh, Matt Burnham, who is one of my really good friends who I was, uh, previously in a band with in high school. Uh, Matt is a very musically genius He's, he's got a very musically genius mind and uh, he he helped us produce a lot of this recording on the aspect of creation. Uh, he's got a lot of good ideas, so we were lucky to, to get him and uh, we we're able to listen and take in some of his, his ideas to be able to shift a little bit of direction in some songs and, you know, put certain parts here and take certain parts out. So... Yeah, it starts with Andy, and then it kind of trickles through the band, and we all have our say in it. So it's not ever just one person saying this is the way it is. We, It definitely starts with Andy and then ends with a collective thought of everyone's opinions. And so with this new EP, Aspect of Creation, I kind of I, I love to ask this question. What was the hardest part on the album for you to master? Maybe not just in terms of playing it, but just in figuring out what to what to play. Huh. Um, actually, uh, there is one song on our EP called Lethoceris, uh, which is not released yet, but will be on the 18th. Um, that song for me personally, I was struggling with the drum structure and kind of the fills I wanted to do. Uh, and to be honest, it took me almost up until the recording itself to really kind of hammer that down because I was just, I, I think, 
you know, as a musician, you get in your own head and you're, you start to think, oh, that's not good enough and I should be doing this differently. And, and for me personally, I think that's what started to happen with that song where I was kind of beating myself up over this is not what I want or is it? And uh, it, it took me a little bit of frustration, a little bit more time to kind of get that song down. I really like that one. And I was always kind of curious how to say the name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lethosaurus. <laughs> Uh, what can you tell us about the art? Because I really love you guys' visual art that goes with the band. Like uh, with your first release, it was so colorful with that wolf and uh, with what you have now. It's just uh, like, it's unique. I like it. And where, where does this come from? Yeah, thanks. We, um, I, I think a lot of it, well, for this record anyway, because we had a new, you know, a new band lineup, we, we wanted to kind of reflect the the meaning of the name of the band like paramnesia is an inability to distinguish kind of fact from fantasy and uh, so we kind of took that and we were reached out to by a an artist called black dot x art i believe he's out of europe somewhere and we just kind of gave him our thoughts and what we wanted and we had this idea of kind of ancient alien ruins and stuff uh so he kind of just we just gave him that idea and he just went with it and we were extremely extremely stoked how how it turned out i personally love it a lot and i can't wait to see it on some merch the music video that you guys did for pestilence of man it really felt like you guys were ca captured the feeling of going to a paramnesia show is that what you were going for is you wanted to make it feel like you were part of the audience watching this thing yeah, exactly. Um, we, especially Kale, our vocalist, has a very, very um, interactive stage presence. He's all over the place, you know, interacting with the crowd, jumping up and down, jumping in the mosh pit. So, yeah, it's, it was kind of to bring that feeling back a little bit uh, and to, yeah, I'd say just to bring that feeling back and, and make people feel like they were kind of there watching as well. That's, that's completely what I felt. I don't know how you captured it, but I felt like I was like being rubbed up against by people jumping around. Like, <laughs> you know, it was bizarre. I felt like closed in, almost claustrophobic almost. <laughs> well, we were extremely fortunate to have one of my friends, Darren Potts. He uh, works in the film industry out here in Vancouver, and he's kind of like a, a somewhat of an independent videographer and he has a, an amazing talent of just knowing where to be with the camera and uh we we were very fortunate to have him come and help us out with that one so thank you darren credits to you <laughs> i love to reminisce about concert memories uh, it's, do you have some fa favorite memories that you'd like to bring up do i man so many i think one of my favorite festivals on the planet is going to be rock fest in montebello quebec uh i started going to that festival almost 10 years ago when it was only you know a few thousand people there was still some pretty it was mostly a punk rock festival pennywise no effects offspring and that that blossomed into a massive massive festival of you know having a uh, system of the down slayer um all, all these types of bands come and it was just, to me, there was no better concert experience in the world than Rockfest Montebello. It's unfortunate that it did go bankrupt a couple years ago and that all this, you know, COVID obviously is delaying everything, but uh, that was one of the greatest atmospheres and greatest festivals I could possibly suggest that anyone checks out if it was still the way it was. But unfortunately, it's, it's a lot different now. So you remember seeing System of a Down and Slayer and Pennywise, like, God, that must have been so cool. I think I've seen almost every band I've ever wanted to see at Rockfest over the years. Uh, System of the Down definitely was one of the most memorable, uh, just simply because of the fact that Montebello itself is a very tiny, tiny town that houses maybe, you know, a couple of thousand people during the summer because that's their kind of busy month. It's just a small little country town by by the river. Uh, but when System of the Down played that that weekend, they estimated uh, 250,000 people were there to see it in a 2,000 person town. So you can imagine how overrun it was, but 
just the atmosphere, everyone, you know, was fairly respectful and nothing got totally destroyed. Uh, and it was just absolutely amazing. Couldn't, couldn't speak more highly of, of that festival. So going ahead with the future with this uh, release coming out, what, do you guys have some more videos planned? Do you, what, what can we expect on the horizon from Paramnesia? Yeah, absolutely. Um, myself personally, for for drumming videos, I as I mentioned before, I, I did I fractured my shoulder a couple months back, so unfortunately, I haven't been able to um, to really get going on the kind of drum playthrough videos. But I right. did. Maybe we should back I did up get... on that. So you you fractured your shoulder uh, snowboarding, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. So I we did. didn't actually get that on the recording. So maybe we should oh, tell okay. people about okay. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, just back in April, I was, uh, snowboarding, you know, doing my usual thing and, uh, did a trick that I, I do multiple times a session and just happened to go wrong that once and landed on my shoulder and crack goes the scapula. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, was very painful to be honest, very painful. But now I'm uh, definitely putting myself through a, a lot of good rehab and gaining a lot of strength back. So I'm I'm just just nearly able to start drumming again, kind of full full force. And I'll be we'll be putting out uh, going back to your your question. We will be putting out uh, definitely some guitar playthrough videos. I will have a drum playthrough video being released. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily the one you'd expect as I am injured and can't, uh, can't really do that right now, but it's at least going to keep that content going and keep people interested. But, uh, for sure we'll be getting some guitar playthroughs with Andy and Matt and, uh, probably some lyric videos as well. Awesome. So s stay tuned, everybody. <laughs> yeah. What advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Honestly, and it's, you know, I think it's the go-to thing to say and cliche thing to say, but I feel like it's been so, it speaks truth to our band, is just keep going. Like, there's there's no one else who's going to make this happen for you but you, right? And uh, the amount of changes, we you know, in our band we've gone through, uh, this is our third bass player now, uh, our second guitarist in the band, and you know, it always felt like when changes like that were happening, that it was like, you know, the m most major setback in the world. And it always felt like we were starting from scratch and it was getting, you know, extremely frustrating and kind of disappointing. But uh, you just, you realize that you're doing what you love and it's hard to stop doing what you love. So, so we just keep going. Wise words from somebody who knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, yeah. Go check out our EP coming out on the 18th. You can go to param-nesia.bandcamp.com. We've got all our merch up there. We're on every single streaming platform, I'm sure you can imagine. Spotify, YouTube, all that. And uh, we really hope to be kind of coming to your city near you sometime and and letting you experience what we got to offer. I highly recommend you all go check out this EP, everybody. I've had the fortunate chance of hearing it the whole way through, and it there isn't a weak song on this EP. You can, you can tell that you guys actually took a lot of time to focus on every little detail. <laughs> it's yeah, we, we absolutely did. And like I said earlier, that's a, a lot credit to our our guitarist, uh, our newest guitarist, Matt Burnham, he uh, has a really good vision for music and kind of was able to produce this record with us. And, uh, you know, we're right now we are sitting down and already writing our full length record. And uh, we really feel that that's going to be, you know, because it's now the true core members of the band. We're extremely stoked on this EP, uh, but there's only going up from here. So, so look out, world. <laughs> we're, we're coming. <laughs> awesome. Everyone, you've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Derek Hill from the band Paramnesia. Their new EP, Aspect of Creation, comes out on June 18th, and you don't want to miss it. Derek, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. 
Hey, thank you, Derek. And it was a pleasure being on the Peach Pit. Awesome. Take care. Take care, man.